up? Aku Adli. Welcome to another episode of Korek Physical. Hari ini aku ada the one and only Yuna. Yay! <laughs> How are you? Hi, I'm good. So hari ini macam biasa, aku dengan Yuna kita akan sambil-sambil sama music and then mm. uh, we're going to talk about dia punya first and then of course after that dia akan do dia punya korekan physical and we'll see apalah hasil korekan dia nanti. So you ready to do this? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Alright. <laughs> What's new? What's new? Okay, uh, album baru baru keluar. Uh, it's called Rouge, and uh, keluar bulan Julai hari tu. And alhamdulillah, you know, like it's doing very well. Kita orang ada banyak uh, featured artists. So namely, ya lah, Jay uh, Little Sims, ada Kyle, ada Tyler the Creator, ada uh, J Park, ada Miyavi, ada Masego, ramai lah. So. Um, I'm very happy about the apa the release of the album and itulah sekarang ni tengah tua and then tu jelah banyak buat kerja-kerja lain juga macam fashion week semua tu. Speak of the new album, right? Mm-hmm. So when you started wanting to work on Rouge, right? Mm-hmm. What was the type of album yang macam you know, I want to do this kind of album. Um, what type of album I wanted to do? Kiranya macam Rouge tu um, it's semi experimental. I think like lepas I put out chapters kan, macam chapters dia more R&B and then before that macam more to pop and then uh, apa ada still ada element folk music tu kan. Tapi macam chapters tu okay, I try something completely different sebab I tak nak stay in one place for so long kan. So macam okay, kita cuba diversify music style semua. And then uh, I rasa Rouge ni macam okay lah kita Kita just put no limit to it. Kita try macam funk music. Kita try macam ada element. I guess like steep pop sikit. Macam Blank Marquee ada that vibe sikit. Um, and ada hip hop. Ada uh, kind of like TLC punya vibe sikit. So yeah, more open lah. I rasa for this album, I just macam uh, nak have more fun sikit lah. So if just one word to describe the album? One word to describe the album, Rouge. <laughs> Very bold lah kot. Macam uh, berani sikit. I rasa dalam album ni, I tak hold back. Macam I just give my all and then I dah tak macam fikir. I, I rasa album sebelum tu, you boleh dapat rasa macam oh, Yuna macam ada shy sikit. Ada macam, still macam even for me kan macam fikir apa orang akan kata kalau I cakap macam ni, apa orang akan kata. So, I think that was my background, you know, coming from Malaysia where the industry is very tough kan on you kan macam uh, industry kita bagi tough love lah kiranya kan so uh, I rasa on this album macam I lebih macam outspoken and just be real and kan kita buat anything wrong pun kan so just um, speaking the truth and then uh, just having fun and hopefully orang akan uh, accept lah our art yang kita nak present tu kan. Recently, you know Room Records put out Pastelite punya new album. Okay, wow. I'm so proud of Pastelite. I think um, the first time I dapat tahu pasal Pastelite was I think four years ago. And then dengar dia orang punya EP kan, lagu dia orang etc. Um, and macam very impressive lah. Macam wow, like obviously macam they have a long a long way to go. Tapi I could see a potential in them kan? and then macam tengok their interviews and you can see even though they were young and um, very new to the scene they knew the kind of music that they wanted they orang macam very adamant about okay ni music ni aku nak buat macam ni je ha, kan so um, i think bila kita orang dapat sign pastel light uh, around 2 years ago uh, kita put out balada and then dia orang datang kan macam okey nak buat album baru so I tanya nak buat album macam mana kan I bagi lah idea macam okey maybe you can do like English songs because I thought they only make in English music kan so I try to be supportive then dia orang kata oh tak Yuna kali ni kita orang nak buat Malay album so so oh okey kan so Malay album banyak lah boleh nak dia apa-apa kan kan so yeah. macam boleh promote boleh you know do a lot of things and you have a bigger fan base in Malaysia and Indonesia and Singapore they write and produce the whole thing themselves and uh, art direction apa semua pun memang dia orang dah came prepared you know they uh, showed me dia orang punya presentation semua so um, I really love working with them because they work really hard 
Uh, and not just talented, like they know they have to work hard. You are one of the very few Malaysian artists yang dapat betul-betul full experience working mm -hmm. with like international producers, studios, apa semua. I mean, mm -hmm. you also pernah merasa, you know, do that stuff kat Malaysia. How mm -hmm. different it is? Of course, you know, like dekat sana lagi advanced kan? And then dia orang ada like the technology and skill and the expertise yang Jauh lagi macam mana? Ya, yeah, advance. Tapi I yakin macam we are heading towards the same way. Sebab at the end of the day, macam banyak producers yang I kerja kat situ, last-last pakai digital juga. You know, like pakai software, pakai a lot of softwares. But they just research a lot of things. And they are so creative kan macam diorang apa, ambil samples, apa semua. So, they found a way to create something new from something very old kan. So, and I think yang the key to making music ni, they still have fun, like macam making music. They don't have fun, and then they want to make good music, not just macam music macam oh me, this is just for me. Ke apa kan? They still want people to enjoy uh, music. And um, I think uh, production wise, I've met a couple of people kat sini yang I suka kerja. I think MFMF does a really good production job. Um, they produce really good songs and they write as well. And I think Pastor Light also did a very good job producing their album and mixing semua. Alif and Sona Wan also does a very good job like production and writing. So, yeah. So, yeah. how hard it is sebenarnya? Sebab you have achieved something yang macam I don't think any Malaysian have achieved. Mm -hmm. So, how difficult? Okay, it's very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the level of your position. Like, what, what are the challenges that you had to go through to wow. be... Um, challenges, I tak tahulah dia banyak lah. Every day you ada challenges, and it's not like macam susah dan you rasa susah sangat. It's like memang ada challenges, tapi you see it as like okay, uh, this is like something yang macam nak stop kita from apa uh, moving forward. Tapi okay, apa kita boleh buat untuk apa solve this problem kan? So, I think for me like the challenges. Um, is just with myself, macam confidence level, self-esteem. Macam kadang-kadang kita dekat sana, kita rasa macam kita tak deserve benda tu kan. Macam um, macam kalau orang kata, eh bagus lagu ni, and kita macam, ya ke? You know, like you question yourself kan, and then sebenarnya bagus kan. So, you just have to constantly macam, okay, like, um, this is good, but how can we make it better kan? And then, um, I think um, when I moved there also, Communication is also a thing. Macam, uh, I was a very shy girl, kan? Moving to the States, I have to immediately macam adapt and then um, belajar communicate lah. Macam communicate dengan producer, just cakap je. Macam kalau you tak cakap, you forever akan... I remember like, uh, apa? First time masuk studio dengan producer and then ada communication macam... What do you call it? Not barrier, hmm. tapi macam okay. Sebab I tak communicate apa yang I suka, so lagu ni macam pelik gila lah sekarang kan. So how do I avoid that? And then the next time macam okay, actually this is what I'm listening to. So macam ada that ice breaking session yang macam kita get to know each other. Okay, tengok YouTube lagu ni I suka. You know like you suka lagu macam mana? Okay, I suka lagu ni. Oh maybe this this and this can we can work together. Macam mana like apa? Make it into our own thing. So think that lah. Um, I dah macam master that thing of just like talking to a producer and a writer macam uh, letting them know what fits my musical style so i think that's it but susah as in macam you kena continue working lah you tak ada day off like no days off <laughs> so yeah this album right i think you have released really three music videos yang macam to me like macam wow visually mm -hmm. conceptually so they set something macam okay i think Visual, apa macam trying to come up dengan apa like a great idea for a song is never an easy thing. Then usually, like when people do that, they have like a team of like fifteen people on their creative direction team. And so, macam all these artists, they have that macam fifteen people to just layan social media aja, fifteen people just to layan creative idea for music video. But team ni and the I and the Adam, <laughs> so. We try to find what's the best idea that we can do within a short amount of time. And contohnya, 
kita orang kerja dengan Tyler kan hmm. and then first of all like kita tanya apa team Tyler macam bila Tyler free so ikut schedule okay Tyler free on this date tapi this date is next week ah uh, gender uh. kan so takkan you nak kata macam oh give up like throw in the towel we're not going to shoot this music video of course we have to take that challenge and then macam okay what can we come up who can work with us within one week so alhamdulillah um, Adam pun macam Uh, dah lama as in like one year lah dekat LA and then kenal a few people that we work with from before and uh, we just brainstorm ideas apa yang um, that we can do that's kind of interesting and simple but very effective kan macam in terms of nak, nak relay this message kan so I think we just have to macam do our best work Like within that short time and also macam confident lah dengan idea tu kan macam just go 100% and tak ada macam like take step back macam eh ya ke ni kan because you are taking time from another person as well kan so yeah I think visually it's important to constantly macam also keep yourself updated dengan apa yang music video ada kat luar sana you tengok banyak music video dekat Vimeo you can do your research macam kalau for example if you like ASAP Rocky usually has like a really good like team put out music videos kan and then uh, macam Tyler also like setiap kali dia letak music video mesti best kan so um, who's your favorite people that you macam follow for their visual kan and uh, you get inspi- inspiration from that lah so speaking of Tyler I mean you work with rub mm-hmm. shoulder with, with the greatest so <laughs> kalau if you were to choose the top 3 moments yang macam you ingat Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah in the Top most three top three yeah. dengan siapa dengan siapa? Yeah, dengan siapa lah. All the greats. Um, I mean, you met almost everyone. Good. I think my favorite would be okay lah. Top three eh. Yeah. Number three uh, dengan Quincy Jones. Okay, Quincy Jones. Siapa tak kenal Quincy Jones? Di Google lah. <laughs> Dia buat semua lagu yang kau orang dengar uh, from what the 60s yeah. to like semua Michael Jackson punya uh, record so and it's amazing how he is still like very sharp my apa uh, pergi rumah dia and then we shot this thing for uh, like a headphone punya brand um, a little like interview Q&A dengan dia and i think dia banyak bagi like inspirational punya tips and apa advice kan so um, seronok sembangan dia dia macam your grandfather lah who's like he's been making Great records. Great records of all time, kan? So him and then number two would have to be I think Usher. Um, Usher is my favorite lah. Like working with him is amazing. I think um, that he like uh, jumpa the first time and he's super supportive and then um, perform dengan dia dekat Roots Picnic dengan uh, the Roots. So that will always be like a, a very special experience for me. <laughs> number one, number yeah, one. Number one. I don't know. Like I feel like the the most favorite moment like is probably with Tyler lah. Kot. I think he's like so such an interesting person. You know, he's very like when you expect dia, dia macam tu lah. <laughs> dia macam full of surprises. And I think um, my favorite time like not even like spend with him is just that. Like, macam I um, was at apa dia orang punya Camp Lockna festival and I remember I was like sitting with my friends and I think festival tu dah nak habis but we were sitting and then I nampak dia dari jauh and then dia dari jauh dia dah nampak I and then dia wave so dia, she came over she came over and said thank you for you know so he's actually you know super nice super respectful and he cares about his work and um, yeah I think yeah hmm. Pharrell number Oh, Pharrell. <laughs> Pharrell, Pharrell maybe closely lah. He's somewhere in there, number one juga. Because Pharrell, obviously my first time working with someone so, apa? Apa, established kan? Yeah, I think like the one week kot kita orang record uh, together dekat Miami. Um, and dia let me try a lot of different songs. And in time tu, I macam takut as per usual. I tak tahu kenapa. And I feel like this is also like a Malay girl punya syndrome that's like, you know, takut nak try all these things. And um, I had to immediately macam, okay, tak boleh takut. Dia suruh kau buat macam ni. Bukannya buat benda 
apa pun kan is just try to write something different sikit macam live your life was a, a, an amazing song and i always love shade so macam in my head it's like lagu ni macam boleh jadi lagu shade in this era kan so okay let's try something kan and i think he really taught me how to macam be apa brave sikit in terms of like trying out something new kan so yeah Perang. I jealous. Tu je boleh cakap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like Tyler, especially Tyler Perel. <laughs> Malay album. Uh huh. Bila? Wow. Um, something for your Malaysian fans. Something for me. You put me on the spot. Ini macam suruh Rihanna buat record baru kan? So <laughs> now, um, insya Allah, I don't know. Like I think for now, like um, okay, we have. I managed to apa? Record satu. Lagu Melayu masuk dalam Rouge and I think um, I was really happy that I get to do that mm. sebab susah sebenarnya nak convince ramai orang atas I yang macam okay we give you you know like usually that's how it works with recording labels macam we give you this much money but we want something yang macam can sell lah mm. kan and I totally understand where they're coming from and but macam Malay songs, I had to pitch to them, you know, like this could be huge in Malaysia, Indonesia, kan? So I will like reach out to more fans in Southeast Asia, and um, so I managed to do that. So Alhamdulillah, ada lagu uh, tiada akhir dalam lagu Mush, and uh, Inshallah, I don't know, maybe one day, you know, like I'll put out macam a mixtape kerja, kan? Macam something fun, and I think uh, sekarang ni we live in an era where Maybe albums is not putting out albums is not a thing anymore. It's not the most important thing you have to do as an artist. Like you can put out singles, you can put out, you know, like a fun album, collaboration album with someone just for fun. Yeah. So maybe, inshallah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Lepas ni kita akan tanya Yuna ada punya first first album, first crush, and so much more. Ooh, yo. The first music yang you dengar? First music yang I dengar, I baru nampak album cover you kat situ, kaset. No doubt. Really? Tragic Kingdom. First? First. Huh? First first kaset yang I beli. Oh, first kaset yang you beli. Uh-huh. No doubt. Why? Uh-huh. Any particular reason? Obviously, sebab lagu Don't Speak tu. Uh-huh. I ingat lagi masa I umur like, 7 tahun, 8 tahun, um, I dengar lagu Don't Speak. Lepas tu, nak, nak sangat album tu kan nak sangat oh siapa ni siapa ni kan tengok music video semua nampak macam cool Gwen Stefani kan so yeah i bought the cassette and then dengar dengar sampai habis lah every day dengar so i think i was like 8 years old 9 years old my first introduction to ni lah pop rock car music when you were growing up lagi kecil daripada tu is there any particular song yang stick to your mind I think when I was growing up, banyak lah yang macam siapa yang popular time tu uh, macam feminine K R U apa lagi. Um, and then I ingat lagi ada this one time dulu dekat Toll, ingat tak? Toll dulu orang akan bagi kaset free. Yes. Excited betul kalau I macam dapat kaset tu dengar. And I think the first um, song yang I macam dengar tu was um, Semi Charm Life. Semi Charm Life. Semi Life, baby. Oh, uh, hafal lagu tu. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, Third Eye Blind. Third Eye Blind, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. I think I remember that, and then I remember TLC, Waterfalls, and uh, Michael Jackson lah. Michael Jackson was always playing in our house, um, and then my dad suka pasang lagu Paula Abdul okay. <laughs> dalam kereta. Uh, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The first local album yang mm-hmm. you purchase. Masa kecil ke atau benda besar tak sikit? Uh, yang paling special ke? Yang paling okay, macam this yang masa is kecil, life changing? <laughs> okay. Tiga-tiga, okay. ada tiga. Masa kecil, masa besar, life changing. Masa kecil, feminine. Feminine punya kaset tu. Kan kalau you buka ada macam semua. All four girls kan. Macam uh-huh. wow. So, feminine. And then, dah besar sikit, I rasa yang really like change my life and inspired me to really do what I'm doing today was Hujan ni EP lah, uh-uh. yang betul-betul yang macam yang check-check rock rock tu ke? Eh uh. tapi tu album. Uh. Lama, no lupa. Lah. <laughs> ni memang way before. I think way before masa dia orang baru gig. I think check-check rock rock tu, I I dah kenal dia orang, so I beli album tu juga. I think way before when um, uh, pagi yang gelap was still like a demo version. I think I that think the album was like really 
truly the the, the one lah yang macam I rasa macam eh, best kalau dia orang boleh buat macam ni I pun boleh try buat juga the album or song that made you wanted to pick up guitar don't speak, don't speak. Uh, by no doubt I think that was the first song yang I belajar main gitar. Uh, satu lagu tu je lah yang I pandai main. Lepas tu I quit sebab sakit jari. <laughs> I stop playing. I think that was it. And then I think masa 19 years old, I start belajar balik main gitar. Lagu uh, Kiss Me, Six Men on the Reacher. So masa you pick up gitar tu, it's more about you wanting to sing ke? It's more about you wanting to, you know, to express? Words. Masa main gitar tu, I rasa I dah, I was in apa uh, UITM kan, hmm. tukar law and I rasa macam I dah lama tinggalkan my music thing, macam I dah tak nyanyi, you know, I dah macam bitter sikit lah, macam don't want to sing anymore, you know, I just want to focus on school, um, but bila I dekat sana, I macam made friends with this girl who plays the guitar, so You know, like Bessa inspired me to like, okay, let's go buy a guitar so I can jam with this girl. And then from there, I start balik main guitar, and I start nyanyi, I start cover lagu, uh, macam lagu Peter Pan, Ku Katakan Dengan Indah, and then start perform sikit kat kelas semua. And then I rasa after I try out for One in a Million, and I didn't get through, I macam got eliminated, I think, the third round. I balik rumah and macam I told myself, you know what, it's okay, I think it's just not meant to be. I'm not meant to sing someone else's songs, you know. I'm meant to sing on my guitar. So from there, I forced myself to write my own songs. I'm macam paksa diri lah, okay, tulis aku sendiri. Then later on after that, baru macam I discover, oh actually, ramai je orang yang macam I kan. Macam hujan, time tu Anna Rafali, hmm. <laughs> and time tu ramai lagi lah kan yang macam really active in the in the music scene so you still remember your first performance after i started writing music my first performance was actually mio chentaku punya event um dia punya event nama dia chenta kashorga or something like that i can remember but um dekat sini lah as a 15 to first show i lah and then um, from there macam seronok perform in front of people in front of people who actually appreciate your music kan macam want to know more macam mana nak beli lagu ya macam lama macam mana nak bagi music kan so i recorded my my own ep my own demo so yeah uh, speaking of your own ep own demo yang gambar yang hand drawn tu uh-huh. any plans to re-release ke re-release. apa yeah. <laughs> wow um so far tak ada lagi yeah. um but i don't know maybe you know like i think uh, because we still own Do the rights to the song. I own the rights to my my older stuff. So, insyaallah one day, yeah. It will be interesting. Yeah, yeah kan? Yeah. Maybe record balik, reproduce balik. Yeah, so. remaster. Remaster. Yeah. yeah. Tengok macam ni. First music crush. Wow, siapa lah? Backstreet Boys lah. Yeah, uh-huh. which one? All of them ke? <laughs> any, any particular one? Backstreet Boys, of course lah. Nick Carter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nick Carter was everything, um, and also the Moffats. Okay. Yeah, the Moffats were, they were like, macam wow, semua lah suka, empat-empat suka. Uh, <laughs> first starstruck moment? So, I used to be neighbours dengan Nora. So, bila dia keluar rumah, macam, ah, Nora! So, macam, I think that was like my first starstruck moment yang I macam rasa macam, zoop, macam, you know, like, darah semua macam, ah, Wow, you know, this is someone famous. Uh, yeah, I think that was my first Astrap moment. <laughs> and I, you know, and I used to listen to her music juga kan. Tu loka and uh, siapa lagi ya? International, I rasa Mila Jovovich. I saw her kat restaurant, dia tengah makan dengan family dia. So I'm a huge Mila fan since dulu lagi. And then uh, I tengah makan dekat booth ni, dia dekat belakang. Tapi saya boleh dengar suara dia. And I immediately tahu tu siapa. Dia macam cakap something dengan anak dia lah kan. Dia macam, please don't run around, you know, stay close to me. I macam, oh my gosh, that's Mila's voice. I turn around and it was like her. I almost died lah. I think that was like my uh, first time starstruck. Jumpa semua orang, okay. Tapi Mila, Mila saya jumpa dia starstruck gila. Yeah. <laughs> first time like macam uh, review of your album ke apa yang macam really... Mm-hmm. You. 
in the museum. Wow, world. I think uh, yeah, definitely. There's like uh, a lot of reviews yang macam internationally and also locally as well. Yang macam really hit me. And um, but you know, I see them as like opinions. I think like they they are entitled to have their own opinions. Um, macam for this new album, dapat Pitchfork punya review, yeah. review kan? Mm. Tuh that, that was my first Pitchfork. Review yang I macam wow, okay, excited. So ada some parts yang dia tak happy pun I happy. Sebab you know those people really know their music and they really know uh, apa macam what goes into macam they appreciate hard work tapi they bagi like constructive criticisms like how this can be better. Uh, tapi pernah lah juga ada yang baseless just criticize criticize macam baseless macam tak look into facts apa semua. I think that one is like shouldn't be that way. The first pujian yang you still remember until today? I think, let's see. It would have to be... Um, ni sedih sikit lah. Ni um, Aizat punya late dad. Aizat oh. the singer. Mm-hmm. Um, his late dad was so, you know, like very involved in his music career. So, I was in London and then they were in London. And I was recording my first album. And it was an exciting thing lah for all of us. Uh, we were all like family friends kan? And then I invited them to come to the studio, tengok kan, macam tengok how we recorded the album, the studio, and they were like very, very proud of me. And I think uh, time to check out. Wow, you know, this is amazing. This is amazing. You just, this doesn't sound like this sounds international. This sounds global. Just go, just just go and fly as high as you can. Something like that. They said, kan, just go and do your thing. Lah. Just, just don't. Don't, don't turn back because yeah. <laughs> no turning back. Yeah. So I think that was like uh, the one which I'm, uh, apa, ujian yang I forever I can hang on to. Which I'm okay. You know, yeah. Mm. Mm. The first person that you would go to mm-hmm. whenever you're feeling down. The first person I go to whenever I'm feeling down would have to be my husband. I think Adam really helped me through really rough times and it's been that way for years. You know, we've known each other for a long time, uh, even before we got married and he's always been there for me, my best friend. And I think like uh, he understands, dia faham macam my career kan, dia, dia faham apa yang I kena buat. And um, contohnya, if I, you know, dealing with like difficult apa, day with the client or like with fans apa apa lah so I think yeah my husband lah <laughs> hi <laughs> okay lepas ni kita sambung kita biar uh, Yuna Kori all the physical releases yang ada kat sini kita tengok apa dia punya hasil Kori kan alright so the first album I'm gonna pick is Nirvana this album because personally I think like the first I rasa masa first first I moved to LA I macam banyak dengar album ni lepas tu I macam rasa nak cover Come As You Are so it's still out there I managed to cover the song and I'm um, still very proud of it so oh, so masa you went to LA 8 years ago <laughs> you dengar balik this album ke uh, baru dengar ke macam tak mana I think like you know I've always known about Nirvana tapi macam sebab muda lagi kan, so mm. macam tak faham sangat mm. Macam ok dengar best, tapi macam bila move sana macam dengar balik And then time tu pun dekat LA baru discover macam uh, record store semua So macam korek fizikal kat sana mm. kan So I think from there lah kot, macam start dengar balik album yang macam klasik Yang lama mm. sikit, so yeah Tara Spice Girls Of course lah, kena pilih Spice Girls Sebab I rasa diorang ni macam Masa I kecil dulu, first time travel pergi UK, they were blowing up. You know, orang baru macam nak start famous. And macam, hush, siapa ni? So, macam dengar album, macam semua lagu best. Best gila semua lagu ni. So, I macam... Um, but, tapi ni greatest hits lah. I think like the first one, I rasa I macam obsessed dengan Spice Girls. And I think they really shape my musical punya taste in terms of like, the pop world tu, I think pop writing is something very different mm-hmm. and I think I've mastered that because I've listened to a lot of pop records 
from the 90s and the early 2000s. Eh? How obsessed apa, were you dengan Spice Girl? Termasuk dunia styling ke, you have posters ke, or the cups, the merchandise and stuff? Ah, uh, I used to, dulu I ada, dia orang punya impulse spray, dia orang punya perfume, I believe. <laughs> Lepas tu, apa, I ada dia orang punya Polaroid, Polaroid camera. Wow. And uh, everything lah, macam pencil case, semua. Yep, Spice yeah. Girls. Tapi time ni, I macam can relate more to Mel C lah. And I rasa Mel C penyanyi yang paling terror lah <laughs> dalam Spice Girls. <laughs> Sebab tu, I suka Mel C. Um, and also because dia sporty and like, hmm. macam fun. So, yeah, okay. Spice Girls. I jumpa something kat sini hmm. tadi. Si Dave and me, boss lama I, David Foster. <laughs> so, thank you David. Um, David uh, is a, a very, very famous songwriter, kalau you all tak tahu. <laughs> and dia banyak tulis all the hits um, yang you all tahu macam Whitney Houston, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, semualah macam work with Babyface, semualah. And, um, I feel very honored because like my first album macam with Verve Records was with him the sign I dengan Universal so yeah thanks David yay <laughs> okay Maria Takeuchi oh I rasa I randomly jumpa lagu dia dekat YouTube one day and um, I just suka and I keep on listening to her songs and Um, I think at the time yang kita orang sign Pastel Light, I realised macam F from Pastel Light also, dia orang memang suka City Pop. So, we were talking about City Pop all day long and um, yeah, Maria Takeuchi. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was like, dia orang punya inspiration for their new album, oh, okay. Pop Bilik Tidur. Kena so, dengar, I tak pernah dengar, I never knew about her. Ya? Yeah? Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Itulah, saya yeah, pergi, yeah. pergi uh, Tokyo hari itu, the first time. Saya cakap dengan diorang, saya suka Maria Takeuchi. Diorang macam, wow. <laughs> Dia macam, impressed. Uh, yeah. Wow. She's so fashionable, kan? Yeah. Dia memang fashion icon lah, Sheila. Love Sheila Majid. Saya rasa masa saya uh, muda dulu, I used to join a lot of singing contest kan hmm. macam banyak singing competition oh ni besar gambar besar lagi <laughs> um, and i selalu rasa suara i macam kecil sikit macam not like vocally i'm not like macam Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston so my parents selalu ajar i nyanyi lagu Sheila Majid because they always thought that we sound very similar hmm. So I guess my singing style is kind of like that, much like jazzy, um, tak terlalu, you know, trying to belt out a song. So yeah, love you, Sheila. So the Cardigans is, I think, the first band um, besides No Doubt, yang I really love as a kid. Much like such a 90s kid, I suka semua lagu diorang, and I rasa I think the way. Dia nyanyi juga, Nina, the way she sang as well was like very similar to my, the way my style of singing, I think. Um, so, yeah. You know about uh, the punya project band, right? A-Camp? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, A-Camp pun a bit country, but Maybe I like that too. Yeah. yeah. A bit lyric, different. They're really depressed, I suka. You want to listen to depressed. I think from this album, my favourite is Carnival. And I remember I pernah cover Carnival uh, masa mula-mula I main gig dulu dengan Pak An, Efri, Adil and I selalu macam, eh jomlah kita belajar macam mana nak main lagu Carnival ni. Um, it was really funny because we covered this song masa nak perform dekat TV3 punya Carnival apa? Oh, Jom Hebo. Jom Hebo. <laughs> so we covered the song and uh, yeah, I still love it. So. Okay, pass the light. Pop Bleak Tidur. Konsep ni semua, the artwork semua damn lah. Yeah, I mean, I shot this photo. Oh, okay. I was the photographer for this album art. Very proud of it. And ni dekat rumah I. <laughs> <laughs> Kita buat set ni dekat rumah I. And um, set design by Rabani Sujak. And uh, ni semua idea dia orang lah. They figured this out. 
very proud of them. Very proud of you guys, Mr. Light. If you were to choose, songs, right, Clyde like you know? which one is your favorite? From this album? Mm. Um, Hello, Sayang, I think is my favorite. It's still yeah. my favorite. Yeah, Sebab, it's so catchy. I remember my Sedi Orang Hanta demo for all the songs. Hello, Sayang was like the catchiest one. Yang I'm like, okay, kena buat. Uh, Kena, kena buatlah album ni. <laughs> oh, kejap. Thundercat. Last, last, last. Thundercat. Drunk. I think this is like also one of my favourite albums um, ever. Friendzone is my favourite. Lepas tu dia ada lagu pasal kucing dia. Is it Captain Stupido? I think so. Alamak, I tak ingat lah. Well, anyways, it's a great album. And uh, he's a great guy. He's very talented. And kita orang pernah main bowling sama-sama. And dia gila lah. Dia akan macam terus lari dekat tempat pin tu and baling bola. <laughs> <laughs> so, eccentric very crazy. Lah. Very eccentric. <laughs> But I love him. Ta-da! Hiram Lee. You still remember that? The process. The process? Yeah. I think so. You know, it was a lot of fun. I remember this is actually a very good album. I always thought that this album boleh jadi movie. Pernah rasa tak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kan? You boleh imagine macam someone should have done something macam kami ke yeah. apa kan? Okay. But, yeah, memang seronok lah. I think time ni, um, we were given macam a choice to pilih satu lagu uh, P. Ramli to cover. And I uh, macam, apa lah, mula-mula I nak pilih lagu lain. Tapi, hujan dah ambil. Tunggu sekejap. <laughs> So sebab no nak lagu tu, fine. Um, so last time saya ambil Gelora Jiwa. Gelora Jiwa was I think my dad punya uh, suggestion. Yeah, my dad suggested, oh you should do Gelora Jiwa. Tak ada siapa pun tahu lagu tu. True. So yeah. um, you should pick that. I think tu memang moto I daripada dulu kot, me and my family. Cuba buat something yang orang lain tak pernah buat. Mm. <laughs> kan? And then it will be special and it will mean something. Like, okay. So, we went with Gelora Jiwa. I'm still really proud of it. AG Coco produced it. Um, yeah. So, the Ramlis pula, how did that happen? The Ramlis. <laughs> <laughs> the Ramlis tu, I rasa that was like a fun project that we wanted to do together. And um, time tu, I, Najwa, um, Liana, Liana, Amira. Amira. Yeah. yeah, I think that was like lama ni. That was a long time Next ago. Next year, 10. 10 anniversary. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> the only, I think the only performances of you guys was masa the launch too. That was the yeah, only one. That's it. Yeah. I think because susah nak macam cari semua right at the same time. Um, but yeah, like it was fun. You know, kita orang macam jenuh lah nak cari apa, macam sections untuk siapa untuk siapa. But, um, AG Coco, obviously, which um, was the mastermind behind this. So, yeah, we managed to make a really cool song out of Itulah Saya. Tapi best album ni. Bila so, mah, I tak pernah terfikir. But when you put it into perspective, yeah, it would be a nice... Kan? Yeah. Tu lah. Hmm, we, should, we should really think about it. I punya favorite here is semua. I suka semua. Tapi I suka monolog punya um, tiada kata secantik bahasa. Okay, I'm trying to find something local. Tak ada hujan eh? Hujan tak ada? Hujan? Hujan memang tak ada. Itu lah. Very sought after. Ya. Yeah. Apa-apa yeah. hujan sold out. Kan? I still have their album. But I don't know where it is. Kena cari, kena <laughs> It's cari. It's in one of the cars. But anyways, Toko Kilai. Hey! These guys are my friends. I'm very proud of them. And... Um, Yeah, I rasa diorang are really, really like trying to put out really good music, Malay music. So, congrats guys and go listen to Tokokila. Who? Ramayan. <laughs> I love them. I rasa diorang ni betul-betul talented. They're very different, one of a kind band. And uh, I might have to buy this album. So, yeah. Last you dah dengar? Last terkesima. Uh, ada deng- not not the not that one. Yeah, Tapi I've known of them. I've known of them. Oh my god, the new album Out of This World. Yeah. Yes. Ah, oh, mm-hmm. mana? Che, mana? Ada last. Last. Isn't Adam related to last? 
Cousin you dalam last ke? Okay, thanks. Cousin you dalam last ke? Yeah, then Asfar. Asfar. Oh, okay. okay. Then Azrul dan Fazli. Confirm. We related. Yep, inilah dia hasil korekan fizikal Yuna <laughs> kat Teenage Hate Record SS14 Subang Jaya. Sheila Majid Emosi ni rare and then last Terkesima and Ramayan. Hey. Thanks a lot for your time Yuna. Thank Wishing you, so you all the best. Much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Seronok, best. Nanti kita buat lagi. Please. Yay. Bila <laughs> next episode, ciao.